and I'm coming from Germany and uh, I'm working for Metronome. Metronome uh, is a product company that's uh, making digital products for wholesale market. Or you don't know, I don't know. It is very famous for uh, most of the European countries uh, and we are trying to develop our products for also Japan and China. Uh, and I'm working there as a product owner. And today I will uh, explain you how we can create OKRs uh, and how we can uh, scale it uh, into the organization and also how we can uh, use it for the products. Um, so first of all, how many people here are using OKRs? Oh, wonderful. Most of you actually using OKRs. That's great uh, to hear it. So first of all, uh, before starting um, jumping to OKRs, we would like to understand why we need to focus first. Uh, we need to focus to, to improve something and to, uh, to improve for the goodness or for the valuable end of the user journey. So uh, keep it simple is one of the uh, keywords that we are using nowadays. So this is the basic idea, but at the end we need to focus how we can grow it. So uh, yeah, we need to focus to keep it simple, yes, but we need to find a way to measure it. So the measurement part is really, really important to see the progress to understand and to evolve the customer journey or valuable product parts or features. So focusing on the simple and, uh, idea and to, as an example, to focus to 10x uh, growth. So for OKR, I would like to give a kind of summary for the OKR. Uh, so it's not invented actually by John Deere, but it became famous with John Deere, I can say. So uh, he, he started at Intel, his journey, and then he became a, a famous uh, venture capitalist and made investments to Google and Amazon. Um, and in the meantime, he uh, introduced OKRs to Google and at the end, OKRs become, or became famous. Uh, and he had a keyword or he had a, a summary for the OKRs. So OKRs has two components. One of them is objectives and the other ones, uh, the other ones are the key results. For the objectives, we can say that um, we are focusing what we want to achieve and for objective, uh, for key results, sorry, uh, we need to know how we can achieve our goal or how we can achieve uh, our objective. For the OKR principles, so in order to um, adapt OKR, uh, we need to have some principles at first for our organization. So these principles actually really uh, familiar, can be really familiar uh, for those who has agile organization on their hand. So it's more uh, simple to adapt uh, these kind of principles if you are already doing agile or of if you are applying Scrum or XP into, in your organization. So uh, probably you can familiar uh, if you are using Scrum or XP at the end. So one of them is focus. Without focusing, uh, creating objectives or key results will not be at, at the end uh, a kind of valuable product. So you need to focus, but you need to focus not only with one person, you need to focus with whole organization. And self-organized teams. So in order to take quick actions, you need to have self-organized small teams and also uh, you need to create and you need to test something with short iterations. So that means you need to get feedback uh, from customer, from user, uh, or within your organization to improve your product and also to improve your organization at the same time. And continuous improvement. So I mentioned about the feedback. So the feedback culture actually um, becomes with the continuous improvement. 
So, but uh, one more thing actually we need to include here. Yes, we can define these kind of principles, but without some values, again, we cannot adapt it uh, to our organization. So we need some couple of values uh, to adapt uh, easily uh, to our organization. So these values are alignment, transparency, commitment, and intrinsic motivation, we can say. So for the alignment, uh, as we said, we need to focus uh, with whole organization. So that means maybe 200 people or 1,000 people need to focus to one something, to one thing. So uh, in order to focus to one thing, it needs alignment between the teams, between people, between organization. So it needs a kind of scaling at the end. Um, and transparency. Transparency uh, is really, really important uh, for the OKR uh, or for adapting OKR because uh, everyone needs to speak and needs to give feedback to others. In that way, we can improve the organization and also our product. And commitment. Commitment, again, is the one of the important uh, parts. Uh, I will also explain the actions part because we have objectives, key results, but also we need to take actions. Uh, in order to take actions, we need actually commitments and intrinsic motivation. So, uh, you, as you know, we have two types of motivation, one of them intrinsic and the other one extrinsic. So this is a bigger topic, I know, and I can give only some part of it. Uh, so in order to focus our uh, product or our valuable parts, we need to, uh, we need to have uh, people uh, that has self-motivation to make it. So that means uh, they need to strive for perfection. They need to strive for the technical excellence. Uh, they need to strive for the market uh, needs. Uh, and they need to, uh, or they like it in their uh, self. And to improve it by their self. And so uh, after values and uh, principles, I think I can start to give some uh, description for the objectives and key results. So for the objectives, as a summary, it should be inspirational. Uh, what does it mean inspirational, actually? Uh, it should motivate and challenge, the, the challenge people. It needs to give... Uh, uh, a creativeness to the to the people. It should generate a kind of creative mind when they read something on the objective. And it should be short and memorable. It is important because whenever you see the objective, you need to memorize or you can memorize it and then it became, became a kind of inspirational point for the product or for the organization and positive and feature en enabler. Uh, it should be a uh, feature enabler because yeah, we will define an objective and we will define the key results, but at the end, uh, while taking the actions, we, the creativeness is really important. So it, it should be, at the end, the feature enabler. And within our control area, so this part is really important because generally we are creating objectives, but it's not really achievable because we need to think about within our contra within our team, for example, or within our department, what we can achieve uh, and what is achievable. So as an example, uh, or how we can define objectives, I can give some questions. Uh, here, um, for example, how we can resolve the problem of our customers. This can be one question. Or how we can improve our conversion rates. Or how we can achieve our goals, general goals. Or um, how we can satisfy our customer. Or how we can hook new users. Um, how it can be a kind of habitual product at the end. We can think about these kind of things to create our objectives, to focus 
the tannic growth, as we said at the beginning. For the key results, um, yeah, we, we will create the objectives, but objectives need some key results at the end to test them or to measure them. So in this way, we can understand if we achieve it or not, or if we reach it or not. So, uh, so it should be quantitative and measurable. We need to give some data or we need to set a level or threshold and we need to test it continuously. And at the end, we can test if we achieved it or not. And observable, again, this is a part of the measure, measurable part. Uh, we, we can observe it. We can observe it by, or with users, we can observe it, for example, with A-B test. We can observe it, but for example, feature toggles. Uh, so we need to create also a technological background or an environment in order to measure with data. And difficult, but not possible. Again, challenging, but achievable things we need to choose because otherwise people can demotivate at the end, but we need intrinsic motivation within the team. Uh, so for creating key results, we can think about these kind of guidelines, I can say. We, we can imagine the new state uh, of our product or of our features. We can analyze the data, we can look, and we can put a threshold, and then we can discuss how we can achieve to the next step. And uh, how we can improve the customer benefit or measure the customer benefit here, or how we can reach our objectives. Uh, we can ask those kind of questions in order to create uh, our key results but all of them should be measurable at the end. And the most important question actually, what are, uh, what are the unwanted side effects of our key result? Because we can create some key result, but it can decrease at the end uh, some other things that we couldn't discuss before, that we didn't discuss before. So it is really important to think about also the side effects of our key results when we wrote them, when we write them. And for most uh, of the OKR sessions or, or OKR adaptation journey, we are thinking about creating objectives or creating key results. But uh, most of the firms or companies not taking or not taking into consideration the actions part because yes, we will create the objecti objectives. So in that way we can focus uh, our goal, uh, and we can create our key results uh, to understand our threshold, but at the end, if we are not creating actions against the key results, uh, we cannot measure it continuously or in short cycles. Uh, so we need actions for each key result actually at the end. So um, for the actions, again, uh, it should give the desired result of the key result, and it should be short, it should be continuous thing, and we need to get feedback, so in this way we can improve to the next level. Uh, and if it is not working, we can again replay it for the next cycle. So as if we have, for example, one week or two week cycle, we can replay the same action. Or if it is not working, it's, if it is not changing anything, we can change the action for our next iteration. And when we are talking about a kind of cycle, we said that we have, we need to have small cycles, but how we can start this small cycle? Uh, I'm, first of all, we need to create a vision. It can be company vision, it can be uh, department vision, um, vision, it can be team vision. Uh, you need to create vision first because we need alignment for the whole organization or whole department. 
at least we need a general goal. And then uh, this depends again to the company to company. Uh, you can schedule a, a OKR planning or alignment meeting. So this can be three month cycle or six month cycle or one year. But we sh you should uh, have a look your exist OKRs and results. And if you need to change it, you need to change in some cadences. So it can be either three months, six months, or one year. But if, uh, more than one year, uh, it's not a good, choice, a good choice, actually, because you need to look your existed OKRs and how you can improve the product or company. And after creating your OKRs, you need to have some bi-weekly status sessions or check-ins, I can say. Um, if you are achieving something or not, we need to take a look. And then we can do a kind of ret retrospective session for our OKRs. And if we need to take some actions, we can review the existed OKRs and we can apply it to the next cycle. So this is a kind of typical cycle for the OKR journey. Um, and this, is, this can be used on, organization, uh, on company level or either on department or either in team level. And for the alignment with the different levels, uh, we can use this kind of typical chart, I think. So, um, so uh, we, we can create general business objectives. So this can be generated from our vision let's say, and then we can put some midterm goals. Midterm goals, as we said, can be three months, six months, or one year, and then uh, we can create chapter-based alignments. Chapter-based alignments here, we are using chapters and metronome, so we, I said chapters, but this is depart department-based, domain-based, or solution-based, let's say, uh, in the hierarchical level. And then for the teams, teams can create their team objectives and team key results at the end. And now we can start the cycle on the previous page and we can see the uh, bottom up changes uh, for our organization. And for an example OKR, so this is a, a kind of company, uh, not company, but football club related. Uh, but it gives uh, basically the aim uh, of the measurable results quickly. So if um, we can create an objective um, uh, for the company club, be the most successful team in the league. Uh, so in order to be successful in the team league, uh, Key results can be winning the championship or fill rate of stadium. And in, under this uh, objective, we may have two different uh, organizations, like coaching the team or marketing for fill, filling the stadium. And we can give different objectives and key results for coaching team and for marketing. And at the end, for the marketing, there can be different teams, again, in the team level, we can write a stadium team or press team, and they may have different objectives and key results, and they can work their own actions to improve the overall uh, ultimate key results of the company or of the organization. So we discussed uh, about how we can create objectives and how we can create uh, key results and actions and how we can align it with the organization and how can be a typical cycle. But in these uh, explanations, actually, we have some hints uh, on the background. If we, can, if we apply also do's and if we don't apply the don'ts, <laughs> uh, we can create a not perfect but valuable uh, product or valuable company at the end. So for the do's, uh, we shouldn't have on team level or organization level or on top level. We shouldn't have more than one, three objectives. So we need to select 
the most important ones for our next cycle for our next three months or for our next six months. And for each objectives, we should have uh, no more than three key results. So let's say if we have uh, 15 key results for an objective, that means 10 of them or 12 of them couldn't be achievable at the end. So you need to select three top key results and you need to focus to the next um, roadmap and uh, for the actions again for actions we shouldn't have more than five actions three to five actions is applicable uh, and achievable in short cycles in two weeks so when I'm mentioning the actions actions for the small cycles actually for one week let's say scrum or sprint cycle um, and stretching part. We mentioned that we need to put some challenging uh, items, but should be again achievable at the end. So we can put some stretching objectives or stretching key results uh, to focus at least 70% chance of achievement. So we may have, we may, we may have some stretching objectives within the uh, our written, written our um, key results for the next cycle, next three months, next six months. And pivoting. Pivoting is again really important. If we see that, if we see that the key result or actions are not working, we need to change them immediately or at least in three months or six months for the next cycle because we are not seeing any kind of achievement or we are not seeing any kind of valuable thing at the end, so we need to change it. And don'ts, uh, don'ts are really uh, a kind of anti-patterns, I can say, for the OKRs. Uh, using it for performance reviews, it's really, really, really dangerous to take directly the OKR results and to focus to one people to improve something because people management or performance reviews are a bit different you need to focus also the career paths of the, uh, of the employees. You shouldn't focus only the product. And lack of discipline. Uh, so we sh as we said, we should have small cycles for taking actions or getting feedbacks. So if we are losing this cycle, that means we are losing our OKR adaptation journey. And using KPIs for key results. So KPI and key result are uh, always uh, mixing in, in people, people minds, pe people's minds, I can say. But KPIs, focusing now or existed uh, data. But we need to focus our next six months or our next year. So this is the difference. So we need to look KPIs, yeah we shouldn't omit them, but we need to focus to the features. So we need to create the key results for our 10x growth. Um, Three for perfection before start. We need to start immediately. If you are thinking about OKRs or, or if you want to uh, focus our next year or next six months, we should start immediately to one team or to a couple of team, maybe not whole company, but we need to start in some pilot phases, for example, or from pilot teams, but we should start immediately. We shouldn't uh, try to focus uh, perfection. And start only when everyone is needed. Is it, this, this is the, again similar one. We shouldn't wait any kind of manager or director from anybody. We can start within our team and it can grow bigger and bigger at the end. And uh, leaving the OKRs in the middle. Because, for example, if we decided some OKRs at the beginning of the cycle, let's say if our cycle three months and if we can, uh, if we stop it at the middle of it, it becomes invaluable. We shouldn't stop it because of the, some urgent issues. 
okay, so thanks everybody.